Welcome back to C++ with Miyoshi. We're talking about while loops today. Uh, while loop here, we recognize the same while loop we had before. Where we have our initial value of one, and then we have our while i is less than or equal to ten. We're going to print it out again using the percent two i gives me uh, the ones lined up and the tens place lined up. So we have one through ten there. Uh, my increment value there. Going to keep doing that. Print out my value again. Uh, like I said in the for loop, you want to get start getting used to uh, counting with zeros. We have the same kind of loop here with a little twist in it. Uh, I have my j starting out with at zero, and then I'm going to loop while j is less than ten. So it's going to count up zero through nine, which is ten values. And if we ignore this part here, we're going to um, increase my j by one, and then we're going to print it out. So that little trick I had from the last one, from the for loops, I'm going to increase my j first. And then I'm going to print it out. And again, we'll keep going through there. So we'll print out 1 through 10, just like we have over here. Now, if we throw a little twist in here with this if. If I have an if that does j is equal to 3, then I'm going to break out of the loop. Um, if I put it right here, that's going to be great. I'll actually just print out my 1 and my 2 and my 3. So we'll only have those three guys there. Uh, if I have it below there, uh, and when it gets to 2, it'll print it out. It'll check, no, it's not 2, so it's going to print it out. When it comes back on the loop, it's going to come back here and um, it's going to come through. It's going to add one more to it, and that's going to be three. And if this is down here instead, it's going to jump out of the loop and it's only going to print out then one and two. Uh, that's great if I use the break. Now, what if I put in that little continue here? When I first learned about continue being used for while loops, I thought that's kind of crazy. And the reason why it's kind of crazy is just this reason here. If I put this if 3, if j is 3, continue, what's going to happen is as it gets through here and it goes through, it's going to be 1, then it's going to print out the 1, then it's going to hit the um, come in here, now it's going to be 1, so it's going to come through, 1 is less than 10 still, so it's going to have 2 now, 2 is going to print out. It's going to come around 2, still less than 10. Then it's going to increase to 3. It's going to print out the 3. It's going to come to the top. And then it's going to look like your program crashed. Well, why is that? Well, it comes to this j equals 3, and it's going to continue. Well, all continue does is come back here to my start of my while loop. Unfortunately, there's no incrementing in while, so it's just going to keep going and looping, looping along, looping along, because still j is 3. It never changed. Well, what if I do this? If I put this here and I move this down below here. Now what's going to happen if I continue? Now I'm going to do the 1 and the 2 still. And then when it gets to the top, it's going to have 2 is less than 10. It's going to add 1 to 2, or j. Now j is 3. When it says j is 3, continue, it's going to come back to the top. 3 is less than 10, so it's going to um, add 1 to 3. Now it's going to be 4. And it's going to continue very along its way. It's just not going to have printed out the 3. These would all move up, and it would be 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then it'll drop out of my loop. So, uh, just a little thing. Be careful with the continue. If you use continue in your loops, when you do with a while loop, be careful because you may end up with a an infinite loop when you didn't want one. All right. Uh, over here, we have a couple more different things. And these are more, uh, both of these examples are a little bit more like um, our, our error checking type loops. And here we have uh, an initial condition of my in is less than negative one. And then I'm going to do my while loop as long as i is less than 0. Okay? Uh, notice that there's no increment in here. I'm just going to print out the input, you know, have the user have a little prompt there. And it's going to input a non-negative number. So as long as the user puts in a negative number, it's going to keep coming through there. It's going to check through if n is a positive number. Well, as soon as n becomes a 0 or a positive number, then it will exit my loop and it will come down and do the next thing. Uh, again, notice that there's no increment in here. All it's doing is just checking to see what my input is like. As long as my input is less than zero, it will keep in my loop. So that's a nice little error checking thing. Uh, whatever your condition happens to be, as long as it matches up um, what the opposite of what you want to happen, it'll stay in that loop. Okay. Uh, one last little thing here. By the way, if I was um, you know if I was a clever videographer, I'd I'd keep looping and looping until. Um, I get a continue or a break or something like that. But uh, anyway, so we'll see if that happens. But if not, this last little loop, 
performs another very similar air checking to this one. And again, here I have my float num. Notice that num doesn't have a value. There's no initial condition. It looks like it's, and I have this while true. True is always true, so this while loop will always keep going and keep going and keep going. It looks like it's an infinite loop. Um, but anyway, let's look a little bit deeper into my loop. Inside my curly braces, I have uh, a, a prompt to the user, and then I have the user get in a give a value, uh, flush out the buffer, and then this little guy here is my is my key to this not being an infinite loop. The key here is that if my number is not zero, then I'm going to break. So this says you know give a non-zero number. So as long as the user puts in a zero, it's going to stay in the loop. But as soon as it becomes not zero, it's going to hit the break and it's going to come down and that. Um, continue merrily along its way after that curly brace. So, nice little uh, loops here, some while loops doing some counting and some while loops doing some error checking. Uh, again, these guys could be uh, floats or um, other types of variables and I just happen to use floats in this case. Um, but, as long as these, whatever these guys inside my parentheses evaluate to true or false, these would be legal types of while loops. So, while loops. Um, keep doing things over and over again as long as you need to and using the while loops. Again, there's another tool in your tool belt, if you will. Um, for loops, while loops. We just have one more loop left to talk about and that's the do while loop. So, uh, hope you join in uh, with that discussion next time on C++ with Miyoshi. Thanks for tuning in.